Pokemon Unite just dropped their newest balance patch update that's gonna be taking place for the Halloween event with the release of Greed Ant. And let me tell you guys, it is gonna change Pokemon Unite forever. The craziest balance patch we've ever seen. Changing the core mechanics of the game. Let's jump into it. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I bring you guys a brand new video today, and today we are diving into the world of Pokemon Unite as we are getting our Halloween event uh, launching tomorrow, Wednesday, the 20th. Uh, this video is going up on the 19th, and for those who are interested, it seems as though this balance patch does confirm it's going up at 3 a.m. Eastern time, so it's going to be super early in the morning. Uh, I'll be live tomorrow afternoon, streaming Green Ant the entire day. I'm very excited for this new character. But the Japanese Twitter actually released patch notes that we're going to go over in this video. We're going to talk about what those changes are, and as I alluded to in the intro, these are some of the biggest changes that I think we're, we're, we're gonna, ever going to see for Pokemon Unite. They changed so many Pokemon. They changed core mechanics like Zapdos getting a nerf, Dreadnought getting a nerf, Rotom getting a buff. A lot of crazy stuff to break down. So if you enjoy our Unite content, be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And uh, let's not waste any time. Let's dive in. But actually, before I do that, don't forget the Shawnee League Community Challenge is going down this weekend, our first big event. I'll be streaming it on Saturday. You guys can join. I'll have the links in the description below. Me and Smash GG teamed up. You definitely want to compete. So grab four friends and join up and have some fun because there's some pretty big prize pools. $10,000 on the line over the next couple months. Let's have fun with that, but let's talk Greed Ant first. So this little trailer dropped uh, about Greed Ant right now. I'll cover this very quickly. He is a very interesting character. First of all, he's confirmed to be a defender. Um, he's got a very unique situation here where he can kind of juggle these berries and heal, as you can see. So we'll have to see what that has to do ultimately with Greed Ant. There's a lot of question marks in terms of what his full kit actually is. He has another interaction where he throws berries out and then he collects them. And what does that do, right? Like, what are those berries doing? Are they healing him? When he throws them out, does he increase movement speed? Very, very interesting mechanics. And then obviously those berries, or the, those urn berries, are the fuel for his bullet seed, which we just saw there. So a lot of questions about this defender and a little surprising that it's another defender. Three out of our last four characters are defenders. Now, this seems to be what his Unite move is and he's able to pounce in and kind of squash those berries. Maybe it gives him a heal. Again, a lot of questions. We just have to wait and see what's going on with Greed Ant. Uh, I'm excited. Like I said, I, I'm all about the defender class. I main Snorlax and Mamoswine right now. So this is right up my alley. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. All right, now let's talk balance patch because this is really the big thing here. Um, so the first thing is they're doing Halloween night in Mars Stadium. So the kind of uh, quick play mode is going to get a huge update. Um, you're going to also be able to kind of swap pumpkins instead of battle items. It's going to be kind of kind of goofy. I'm excited to try that out. But then there's some big changes to various Pokemon. So Pikachu uh, gets some buffs. Uh, the main Pikachu, I, I will say I have about 100 games on Pikachu. It's a Pokemon that I actually really like playing. Most of the time people run Thunderbolt and uh, Electro Ball. In this context, they're buffing both Thunder and Volt Tackle, increasing the damage dealt in both scenarios. It's going to be very hard for them to shy away from Electro Ball because it is such a good move. But Volt Tackle, Thunder both getting buffed. We'll have to see how those play out in terms of damage dealing. But Pikachu definitely needs a little bit of damage buffs, in my opinion. He's so squishy and uh, very difficult to play strongly when you're behind. But again, some of these changes made, made completely... It's going to turn the whole game on its head. Slowbro getting a buff to Amnesia. The wait time has been shortened, so we're assuming that means the cooldown, so you can use Amnesia more frequently. And it also mentions that the HP recovery has been increased. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, using Amnesia not only heals you, heals you up, but increases your defenses, and also decreases the amount of damage you're dealing on your next Scald or Surf, if I'm not mistaken. So Slowbro potentially could end up seeing a little bit more play here, depending on how drastic that HP recovery is. Uh, a long-term HP recovery move can always be good. And, uh, you know, that can give him a lot of sustain in battle. Gengar getting a buff. After level 5, when you deal special damage, you will recover your health according to the damage done. So, this is basically going to give him kind of a lifesteal situation where when you deal damage, you actually are healing back up, much like Venusaur's Giga Drain. But that seems to be on all of his special attacks, which would not be his basic auto, but his boosted auto and the rest of his attacks. Which could give Gengar some more sustain, allow him to kind of live in battles longer. I find it's interesting that they're buffing Gengar right when the battle pass is coming to a close pretty soon. And we've got this really cool spacesuit Gengar. What are you going to do? But uh, I'm excited to see it. I think it's an interesting change as opposed to trying to tweak its kit in terms of its moves. But rather focusing on a, a secondary effect, a, almost a passive, giving him some health steal. Blastoise is getting some pretty big changes. Its Hydro Pump is going to have a damage reduction to it. So they're going to reduce the damage on Hydro Pump, but they're actually going to reduce the cooldown on Water Spout. So Water Spout was originally the set people were running with Rapid Spin. 
Uh, but then we found out that there was a bug in terms of using autos and boosted autos. So then they, you know, most people kind of shifted gears to running Hydro Pump and even Surf. Now they're reducing the damage of Hydro Pump and trying to make Water Spout more metagame. So we'll have to see about that. And then ultimately, they nerfed its Unite move. And, and Blastoise is a Pokemon where its Unite move is really what allows it to set, stand, you know, stand apart from other Pokemon. Its Unite move is so incredibly good at smiting objectives. They're going to reduce the damage of that. So ultimately, we'll have to see how significant that is. But either way, this is something that could really hurt Blastoise in the metagame as a Pokemon that's so good at stealing objectives. Venusaur has kind of taken the crown as one of the top Pokemon in the metagame, and it is getting nerfed in this patch. Its Giga Drain HP recovery has been reduced, so the amount of health that you're gaining back from Giga Drain has actually been reduced, and they really like Solar Beam because they are actually going to increase the amount of damage from Solar Beam on Venusaur. So Venusaur's main set now is Petal Dance Giga, uh, Giga Drain. They're nerfing Giga Drain, and they're buffing Solar Beam, and I'll tell you what, Solar Beam Venusaur in the right hands is still a very good pick, so the fact that they're buffing Solar Beam this could easily become the strongest ranged snipe attack in the game and that's scary uh, i'll tell you what that's scary in the right hands that could be a very powerful pokemon so don't be surprised to see the sniper venusaur come back into meta as the giga drain one maybe falls back a little bit i think even with a little bit hp recovery uh reduction it's still going to be super good because the movement speed the sustain in battle the the fact that you have those boosted defenses when giga draining but it's going to depend ultimately on how much they nerf giga drain there Lucario has been kind of the premier all-arounder for a long time and they're actually going to lower its base attack so the amount of damage that Lucario is going to do across the board is going to be pretty in uh, pretty significantly reduced we'll have to see what that you know delta is how much they change it I like this change personally steadfast which is passive ability they're going to reduce the frequency that it activates so there's going to be a, a longer cooldown on steadfast which again I think this is a really positive change for Lucario not for Lucario players but for the game because steadfast is one of the best abilities in the game it basically activates giving him a shield and other I think other passives too I think it even increases movement speed um when he drops to a certain amount of health so reducing that much like I feel like Wigglytuff's cute charm activates way too frequently that could be a really good thing and then they fix some bugs on its on its unite move Garchomp has you know consistently be rated pretty low uh in terms of Pokemon Unite Get some buffs here they made his basic attack faster and i like that because the reality of it is garchomp's kind of bread and butter is getting that five stacks on his basic attack and then slashing away with his basic attacks so increasing the speed of that could be really successful for him he still struggles early game but you know at the end of the day he could be an objective shredding machine when all is said and done and they are going to buff dragon rush increase the amount of damage done to the opposing pokemon from there we have zero aura getting a, a tweak to wild charge plus simply a bug so they're going to fix that Cramorant getting a dive bug fix as well. Talonflame getting a bug fix with Gale Wings, its passive ability. And then we kind of shift gears to the most impactful changes that we're seeing, which are actually changes to the core mechanics of the game. The three main bosses, Zapdos, Rotom, and Dreadnought. Before I jump into that, I do want to say that I thought that a lot of these bug fixes were really good uh, and, and patches are really good. I'm excited to see how Lucario plays after this. Obviously, the Venusaur nerf was, was nice, obviously. I think Talonflame is still going to be very strong. Uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. They didn't change Talonflame at all. Very, very powerful Pokemon. I would have liked to see them tweak some of the lower tier picks. I would have liked to see something done to like a Gardevoir, uh, maybe to, you know, a Mamoswine. Curious how Slowbro is going to factor into all this. But ultimately, they're headed in the right direction, right? They are really focused on trying to get this game to be as balanced as possible. And I give kudos to them for that. But here are the big changes. And I know a lot of people complain about Zapdos and how overpowered it is. And I'll tell you, at a higher level of play, and I know people like to meme on me, like, what does A-Drive know? But the reality of it is, you know, I, I'm consistently playing against top 500 players. When you're playing in a five stack, 5v5, in a tournament setting, Zapdos is not unbalanced. I, I honestly feel that way. I feel that it is, it is a relatively balanced mechanic, and it's a comeback mechanic because the game is so short, you have to have those things. So I don't think Zapdos needed crazy nerfs, right? I don't, I don't think the double points is a bad thing. I don't think... You know, because if you're coordinated in a five stack and you're, you're strategic about it and you've set yourself up to win, you've been winning the whole battle, you're probably going to win the game. Obviously, that's not always the case, but they did change Zapdos and I actually really like how they changed it. They changed it by saying the amount of Aos energy or the points that you score that you get after knocking out Zapdos is decreased. So the team that knocks out Zapdos now gets less points. Now, you may not know this, but if you are the person to knock out Zapdos, you get 30 points added to your point total. And if you're on the team that knocked out Zapdos, you get 20 points automatically added. So at that time of the game, those are doubled, right? 60 and 40, and you automatically have the open goals so you can score. 
So by reducing that to whatever it may be, let's say they, they whack it in half, and now you're at 15 and 10, or maybe you get 20 if you knock it out and 10 as a, as a teammate, that significantly reduces the amount of points that your team is gonna score. Therefore, it reduces the kind of the likelihood that one team's dominating, loses Zapdos on a coin flip, and then still loses the game. If you really dominated that hard, it kind of brings that Zapdos back a little bit. It dials it back a little bit so it's not as overpowered. Now, the reality of it is if you get team wiped, they get the other team gets Zapdos, they're picking up all your orbs anyway. But I do think there's a positive change. I'm excited to see how it plays out. Now, here's where things get a little dicey for me, and this is where my concerns come in, is they've changed the way Dreadnought and Rotom work. Now, obviously, if you're playing in a high-level setting, or even if you're just casually solo playing, I think a lot of people understand Rotate to Dread, right? The key objective of the game is Dreadnought. Rotom should always be an afterthought to Dreadnought. And I felt like the fact that we've established this metagame of Dreadnought being the dominant focus between the two was a good thing because it, it, it encourages a team fight, right? It encourages both teams to rotate to the bottom of the map and engage in a team fight, generally 4v4 or 5v5 or 5v4. And I felt like that was healthy for the game in my, in my personal opinion. Because if you were to spawn two Dreadnoughts on the map, you could argue, oh, well, there's strategy. You got to do half and half or whatever. But it takes away that element of the, the big team fight, which I think is a good thing for Unite personally. So either way, they, they're nerfing Dreadnought here. And they're going to nerf the amount of shields that you get when you knock out Dreadnought. So Dreadnought provides a shield. And the secondary effect of Dreadnought is that you get a massive experience buff as well. And they're reducing that too. So not only are you, you getting less XP for beating Dreadnought, you're also not getting as big of a shield for beating Dreadnought. And that alone could mean that Dreadnought is significantly less important. But let me add to this. There is a significant ramification to the fact that they're reducing this XP, we'll have to see how much they reduce it. Is it 50% reduction, 75, what, how much are they reducing it? But this could ultimately change the entire game because certain characters often are hitting level 14 or 15 by the end of the game because of the Dreadnoughts, because of the jungle, thing like that. Now, are they still gonna hit those levels or are they gonna more likely be 12 or 13? And how does that impact not only their, their, their plus moves once they get those upgrades, certain heroes that scale really high at the end of the game, how does that impact them? If you're taking out however much XP there is from the game, how is that gonna impact that? Could be really big. And then they are buffing Rotom. So when you knock out Rotom, Rotom's movement speed, HP, and attack to reach the opponent's goal have all been increased. So when you knock out Rotom, if you knock out Rotom, when he starts headed towards the other team's goal, he's gonna do it faster, he's gonna be stronger when he does it, and he's gonna have more health. So he's gonna take longer to knock out. And then it also says that the effect time when the goal area is broken has been extended, which I interpret as when he actually lands in the goal and you have a timer to score on the auto score from Rotom, that timer is longer is what I'm, what I'm kind of understanding here. So again, I'm not sold that this is a good change. The Zapdos I like, the Dreadnought on the Rotom I'm very skeptical on. I want to see how it plays out. This is going to completely change the metagame though because, you know, three bottom lane right now is the meta in high level play. That may go out the window. Rotating a full team to Dreadnought, that may go out the window. Competitive comp picks may change. You may say, hey, listen, you know, we're going to send four to, four to Rotom, or we're going to send four to Dreadnought, but we're going to keep a Crustle top to shred the Rotom, or we're going to keep Garchomp top to shred the Rotom, or we're going to keep Talonflame top so he can dive and, and, and steal the Rotom if the other team goes for it. The whole metagame is going to shift from this. This is some crazy stuff. So we'll have to wait and see what the numbers actually look like. I'm excited for the changes because I think it's a good thing that they're changing and tweaking and whatever. But I will I will be completely honest. I'm a little hesitant because now you're looking at Rotom and Dreadnought being, let's let's argue equal, right? We don't really know. It may still be that Dreadnought is far superior, but they're closer than they've ever been right now in terms of value. Does it take away from the team fights? Does it take away from those big battles that oftentimes will decide a game because now they may be split between two and two and, you know, a jungler... You know, if you are in the top lane, do you ever rotate to bottom anymore, right? Are you ever, ever seeing those other Pokemon on the map? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of theory crafting here, but I do have my concerns and thoughts. So that's that. That's the full patch breakdown and my, my thoughts. Uh, we'll get the detailed numbers tomorrow. We'll do a full breakdown on Greedent. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. Be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And definitely tune into my live streams. I'm going to be grinding Greedent. Greedent is a meme Pokemon on my channel for those who don't know. The A-Drive Army loves Greedent. 
Uh, I popularized Green Ant when Sword and Shield came out from a competitive battle perspective, so I'm really excited to take it to uh, to Pokemon Unite. It's not the most popular mod, but he's certainly funny, and Hey Kids is here to destroy some people, so we'll have a good time with that. And again, he's a defender, so he's right up my alley. That's what I play anyway. That's going to be that, guys. Thank you so much for watching this one. Let me know your thoughts in the patch in the comments section below, and that's going to be that for me. My name is Dan. I also go by Adrav, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.